No two cultures are more intertwined than that of tattoos and motorcycles. Leaving Daytona, we decided to take the A1A up to Jacksonville. It was beautiful, the beach, the coast, the whole way. There was very few points in that ride that you couldn't see water. I'll tell you right now, the sand on the road sucks. It was like riding a sandblaster the whole way. I will admit that at the beginning, it was nice. It's good scenery, but I easily could have turned off, made a left, and gone on a different road to just mix it up a little bit, but it's all right. Today, we're headed up to Jason Harm's shop, Live Wire Tattoo. I know Jason, he's been tattooing about the same length of time I have. He's from the school that I was from. He wanted to do old school traditional tattoo. That's what he likes to do. I was excited about that. That was a pretty stretch of highway. That was. Good scenery. We went through that area where the trees were completely surrounding you. Yeah. yeah. What highway was that? A1A. Beachfront Beach Avenue. Beachfront Avenue. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Come on, vanilla ice, man. What's up? How's it going, guys? Hey, hey, up, hey. Man? How are How you, are bud? You? Good to see you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. It's a nice shot, man. Thank you. How many artists do you have in here? There's three of us. Right on. I'd say show me around, but you can kind of see it it's, all. I love the openness. I really do love the openness. Our shop is set up real similar to where we've got a little half wall so that we can interact the whole time. And Makes I like it so that. much easier. You know, if my customer's boring, I want to be able to talk to Bert. I like the openness of people sit around and talk with each other. And that's kind of what Jason at Livewire has going on too, you know, that open air. We're all going to sit here and bond with each other, you know, we're going to have a conversation. Well, and they don't feel like you're hiding anything from right. them. As soon right. as you walk in, they see exactly what's going on. There's no like, hey, is it clean? Is it this? Is it that? What's, you know. You guys do piercings? No. Nope. You don't do piercings? No, nope, just tattoo. A lot of the private stuff that goes on is piercings. I've never had it. I think it's pretty cool that tattoo shops are separating themselves from piercing because it really has nothing to do it's with what we do. Two different entities all together. Right. People come in, if you don't do piercings, they look at you like you're crazy. Oh, they think we're kidding. Yeah. When you tell them, well, we don't do pier... No, really. Well, where's your jewelry? I'm like, we got it in the back. <laughs> I talked to Jason earlier in the week, had planned on getting a shark tattoo. He specializes in kind of the traditional style, which I love. Being along the ocean and being in Florida, I figure it's only right that I end my Florida trip with a shark on my leg. All right, here we go. I'm gonna start in nice and easy for you. So how long have you been tattooing? Started in 91. Wow. Whole different world from 24 years ago when people were still scared to go into a tattoo shop. It was like walking into a magic shop or right. some strange thing, you know, all of a sudden there's all these pictures and symbols and, you know, you didn't know if it meant any one thing or another. All his walls were covered in flash. It still had the number codes on them and the price sheets on the wall. A number one tattoo was $50, a number two tattoo was $60. So you could go, if you had $80 in your pocket, you could find a tattoo that fit into your budget. In the late 80s, early 90s, like everybody had Tasmanian Devil. It was like Looney Tunes characters. Oh yeah. Like, and I love doing a Taz or a Hot Stuff or any of that. I mean, those are still actually fun images to tattoo. It was like they were meant to be tattooed. But then it moved to like everything was ripping through the skin. American flag, I want it ripping through the skin. I want it to look, that's coming back now. Have you noticed that? Yeah, it is. You know what I do like and miss, and I think it's still needs to come back some, is the Swiss cheese look. Right. You ever use any of the rotaries? No. No? Ever even tried them? Never had any interest whatsoever. Yeah. Haven't used one, no rotary, none of the pneumatic stuff. I Stay loyal to the coil. Yep, that's it. I like a coil machine. They drive just fine. 
I guess, you know, since we've been in the tattoo business so long, we've had all these innovations come through and what really works and all, you know. What Jason's doing, he's keeping our traditions alive. If you took a picture anywhere in that shop and made it black and white, you would think it was from the 50s. How many shops are there in this town? There's gotta be 60. Wow. Now there's so many non-artist owned businesses, you know. Right. A lot of head shops that'll have a tattoo corner and it just gain extra business or revenue. And of course, if you're not doing it hands-on, you don't know whether it's quality right. or fill a spot and get in people's pockets. Yeah, there's not too much of that out where we're at. Daytona's full of it. We're pretty regulated in Missouri. Who can get a license, how to get a license. They've set up their own department for that, so which is awesome, it's regulated by the state. Well, they have here in Florida now as well. Made a lot of big changes over the past couple of years, which a lot of are for the better. There's still a learning curve right. that they're yeah. going through. Would so, understand what industry standards should be or shouldn't be. American Flag One it says Live Wire. It's brilliant, man. It's a brilliant little logo. I've seen it all over the place. And I never even made the connection until I walked in here today going, damn, that's where this is from the whole time. I've seen those stickers. And you start traveling around a handful of places, and even though there's still a million tattoo shops these days, and all of a sudden you realize you're like, all these people are somehow that's what, connected. That's, really, that's exactly what's happened on this trip. No Willie's idea. and Bill's and Atlanta, where you're going to go. Right. And, I had no idea that there was this chain that we were following, and I really didn't. And I know that some people are going to believe that that was set up, and it wasn't. I mean, I get here today, I didn't know that you knew Phil. Show me a picture of Phil with an afro. We're going to approach Phil tomorrow with that. When we were riding through Daytona, I noticed all these new ones that sprung up, they don't know us, and we don't know them. They'll never fall into that hole. For the springboard that they're working from with this is entirely different than, you know, where I was groomed. My tattoos on the trip were all in a short amount of time. You know, everybody else was kind of spread out. So I was excited for my tattoos to be done. How's that feel, Bert? Feels good. Yeah? Feel like a shark bite? <laughs> you have picks, guitar picks sitting on your counter. You play guitar? No. Good friend had those made for me, so definitely a fun little business card tool. Right. Sometimes people are carry that around more so in their pocket maybe than a business card, and they'll pass off to the next person, so. There's a correlation between motorcycles, music, and tattoo. And oh, just... there's no getting away from it. Definitely a lifestyle thing. It just happens. You meet a group of people that, that just get it, and you're just doing your thing and living your life, and most people that have the same understanding is because you don't fit into that nine to five. I can't tell you how many people over the years would come in and get tattooed and you're having a discussion with them and then they, they just go, well, so what else do you do? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? This is it. This is my career. And then they go, you can't make a living doing this. And I'm like, this is it. Tell me about your love for motorcycles. Like what kind of motorcycles you have? Why the connection with you? What do you get from it? Uh, I've got Harley Davidson's, got a few of them. Couple old shovel heads, Evo bike. I was into muscle cars first and foremost. Had a handful of them over the years. Still got a couple of cars. Had a lot of friends that were getting into motorcycling, riding, especially Harley Davidsons. And uh, I was reluctant for a while because I didn't want to feel like that guy that was just kind of jumping on the bandwagon. Right. But then the more and more I really was just around it because it was there through doing this kind of work and tattooing other people that ride motorcycles. The bug bit and I could not escape it. I was like, I, I have to do this, you know? Right. Jason and his crew invited us to go and have a friendly bowl off. They have a tattoo shop across from a bowling alley. So they set up this little bowling escapade across the road that they obviously attend quite a bit. Well, you guys are staying in Jack's overnight. Yeah, right? we're staying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that what you do? That is what we do. All right, I'm down for bowling. If they're inviting us to go bowl, they're probably gonna kick our ass. You love it? I do love it. I can't thank you enough, man. Like I said, man, I hate getting tattooed, but God, there's just this feeling you get after you get result. another tattoo. Yeah, because it's finished. You're like, oh, thank God. Jason Harms is an amazing traditional artist. This is my last tattoo. Yeah, man, it was super cool. Look at that, look at that! 
I'm not much of a bowler. In fact, I wear a size 16 shoe and most bowling alleys don't carry size 16, but I'm down for any kind of competition. Denny tells me that he's got some mad skills. One time Denny told me he had mad skills in dirt bike riding and no wheelies, no crazy anything. So All the talk. <laughs> We were talking in a gas station parking lot. I was joking around about I was skilled and that I would beat everybody playing bowling just because I'm competitive. Dave heard, I have mad bowling skills. I believe Denny bowled like a 98. A 98 is not mad skills. Jason's like Norm from Cheers. The bartender gave us free drinks just because we were with Jason. All of a sudden, Roadside Marty shows up. <laughs> God damn right. Roadside Marty lives in Pensacola. Here we are on the other side of the state and he shows up. We got to spend the evening hanging out, talking. There's stickers out there that say who the f is Roadside Marty and they're all over the place. But he's this guy that is in the motorcycle scene and he's everywhere. If there's a motorcycle event, Roadside Marty's somehow involved in it. We had a great day today. Appreciate it guys. I love you, man. Love you too. Spacey was leaving us. I have absolutely grown to consider Spacey a tremendous friend. Meeting these fellas and doing this trip with them and the things that happened, the gas was let out of me, man. I don't know what to say, you know? Spacey leaving was just as surreal as him coming on. He said his goodbyes, quick made friendship between all of us. You know, two guys riding motorcycles together, that's how you create a hell of a bond, man. You get one life to live. Many people do it many different ways. I personally suggest that you do the best you can at everything that you do. Yeah, I wish he could have stayed longer, but you know, it is what it is. When it's said and done, I'm gonna be there at the block party. I'm gonna ride up there in their home territory, and I look forward to meeting everyone. I think this show in the end, though, you know, it's a never ending thing. We're gonna keep going with it. So many more roads and so many more stories, and I really hope to be a part of them in the end. Hey, I'm here with Jeff Garner, owner of Starting Point Real Estate and producer of Tattoos and Turnpikes. Guys, we buy houses, we pay cash, we close fast, any condition, any price, anywhere, 314-333-5555. Jacksonville to Atlanta. Atlanta's a good art spot. I've been up there for an art show. I've been to Atlanta once. It's really a fast, fast town. We're riding and it's just like riding in an oven. I'm dumping water all over myself trying to stay cool because it was just ridiculously hot. So I'm looking for a shop in Atlanta and I'm using my resources. When we went to Iowa, when we were visiting Darren McKegg, he'd asked me where all we were going. I said, we got everybody lined out and I told him except for Atlanta, Georgia. And he's like, who are you going there? And I said, well, I wanted to go to Phil Colvin. He's like, oh, I got his number. I was told through my network of people that hey, he was the guy that I should go see and that he was cool. He was in our bigger circle of biker and tattoo community. Memorial Tattoo is where we met up with Sweet Jay Delaney. He's a Marine friend of mine. He's gonna meet us up there, not only to visit and hang out, he wanted to get a Memorial Tattoo. It's getting warm. I could use another five degrees. Like what's the difference between 100 and 110? 10 degrees. Yeah, it's called air conditioning. Hello. Oh, it feels good. Yeah, it feels nice. Anybody home? What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? Phil, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to finally meet you. How y'all doing? Glad y'all made it in all right. He's never ever threw away anything that anybody's ever given him. Little figurines, statues, merchandise. There's some velvet paintings. A tattoo shop museum. Seven functioning tattoo rooms here. Was this like an old house that you converted into a tattoo shop? It started off as an old house and then it was a real estate management firm for a long time. Yeah. So by the time we got here, all the offices were already laid out. So it was easy, man, throwing some paint. Can't beat that. Cut a couple holes in walls and yeah, we're good to go. Cool, man. Yeah, I'll take you through the rest of the shop, man. It's, it's a big place. What's up, buddies? 
What's up, man? How you been? Good, good man. How are you? All right, good seeing you. How long have you guys been riding? Except seven hours. Six today? Six today? Damn! 370 yeah. miles today. Yeah. Well, Phil, this is my buddy Sweet Jay Delaney. Ah. Great to meet you, Jay. Yeah, you too, Phil. All right, you ready to get some tattoos today? Man, I hear a lot of good things about you, so I'm excited to see what you got. Well, I'm ready when you are. Let's do it. Let's yeah, see it. All right. Cool. Glad you're here to get this, and I don't have to get another one. I've known Dave for a little bit out of St. Louis. I just so happen to be out here in Atlanta. You know, I've been thinking about getting something that means a little more to me than just a regular tattoo. With what I did in the Marine Corps, notifying families when Marines were killed, I decided I wanted to do something that would memorialize all of those that I buried. It wasn't an easy job, but uh, it was something that I had to do, and, and I'm excited to see what Phil's gonna do. Jason wasn't lying when he told me, he's like, Phil looks like a wizard. <laughs> he has got like long gray hair, long gray beard. See uh, that staff over there? I'm also an ordained wizard, so I can perform weddings and oh, funerals as a wizard. Uh, he's a tattoo wizard. I've been talking to people, man, this whole trip, and people that have been tattooing for a long time. You know, I mean, you've been tattooing for 27 years, and you're still relevant, you know, which means you've had to adjust and grow with the times. Well, you know, I've been tattooing in the same place for so long, like in the same city. You know, I work really hard on what I put out and, you know, I work really hard on what my shop puts out. And I also work on my attitude and how I treat people. Like, I treat people very fairly and I treat people nice. And my personal business has not been affected, but the industry on the whole is definitely on the decline because of people watch these shows. And you ready? Yeah. All right. They watch these shows and they think that, you know, we all make a ton of money. We hang out with rock stars and we do all this cool shit all the time. Our lives are so grand. It makes these people want to go out and tattoo. So now they're buying all this crap off of eBay or Amazon and they're tattooing their little buddies and somehow they get a little bit of change in their pocket mix so you know they're opening some crappy tattoo shop. And now you've got 10 times the amount of tattoo shops it's taking business away from the hardworking guys that have been around for so long that really deserve that money. Just to have it taken away by these chumps. I can't say any one particular TV show is to blame. All right. But there have definitely been shows that glorify. They don't show what a true apprenticeship is really like. Well, what was an apprenticeship like back then? Or I mean, did you just what, a hang around? Or I mean, how's that? Look? You know what? Like, okay, I got really, really, really lucky. And like, I wasn't out looking for an apprenticeship, nothing like that. I was just enjoying being at the tattoo shops at the time and getting tattooed. I went and met this guy. We hit it off real well. He's a super nice guy. And that dude took me on for free. He gave me all my first equipment. Like, I didn't pay for anything in my apprenticeship. But with that being said, he definitely made me earn everything. He made me sit there behind him. And he'd say, you know, my first color is black. So I'd pour his black and say, my next color is red. I'd have to sit there the whole time he's doing black and shake a bottle of red. And if I ever stopped shaking, he'd reach up and dirty glove, pop me in the head, you know? That kind of shit. What was I gonna do? He was teaching me for free, you know? I'm not gonna complain, I'm not gonna bitch. So where'd you uh, come up with the name? Originally, I was gonna open the shop on Memorial Drive. Great name, being on Memorial Drive, be easy. And then the original location that I was gonna open in, I decided against it. I definitely didn't want to name it the same name as any other shop, because that gets done to death. When we were at Old Crow, we were talking to him about how he got his name of his shop, and he said one of his names was Electric Wizardry. Too bad that Phil really likes Memorial Tattoo, because Electric Wizardry would be great. Well, luckily, there's no other Memorial Tattoos, and hopefully, None of you assholes out there in TV land watching this is going to steal my name. Just f you if you do. It's actually kind of fitting because, you know, I was born in Atlanta, and they settled in St. Louis, went to military high school, and then went into the Marine Corps and uh, did some time in Somalia. A lot of people know, like, Black Hawk Down, right. you know? Yeah. Got out, did a little bit of reserve time, then went back active duty, and I ended up getting to where I was notifying families for, uh, you know, Marines when they were killed, and. And also oh, veterans, yeah. That was did your job? That, that was my job. I did that for about six years, close to 2,000 funerals. And one thing that I've always wanted to do was kind of memorialize it on me. When I started thinking about it, memorial is what tattooing is all about in a way. You know, people get tattoos to 
remember certain things or in memorial of loved ones, memorial of their homes. Phil is another one of these guys that has been around forever in the tattoo industry. He's just got a wealth of knowledge. While we were in there, we actually got to hear some great stories. What's the strangest place you've tattooed someone? Inside the vagina. Inside? Yeah. Probably shouldn't tell that story on camera. So anyway, are you familiar with any St. Louis tattoo shops? Yeah, man, Trader Bob's, my good friend Al Boy. Yeah, actually, that's our last shop that we're gonna hit with. You know Al? That's amazing. Yeah, I've known Al for a long time. We worked together briefly a long, long time ago here in Atlanta. Super good guy, man. It's actually the first tattoo shop I've ever been in in my life, 17 years old. Man, that's awesome. Well, I seen a picture yesterday. I was gonna ask you about this. Oh, God, I can only imagine what you got there. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I won't comment on that. You won't comment? <laughs> I think people are super envious that we're able to just go f you to society and think outside the box and we're going to open up our shop and we're going to chase that dream. Like, chasing a dream is something that people have quit doing. You right. Know? I well, I mean, we are the people that they wish they could be. I mean, man, I go to a bar and I see these guys that sit there with their fancy shirts are tucked into their jeans and they're sitting there talking about whatever bullshit sports team they're talking about. I don't know, man. They're the most repressed, boring people on earth. How could you want to be them? Like, I can understand how you'd want to be us. Like, it took me a few years to realize that in the tattoo shop, there's zero filter. We're allowed to be 100% us. Oh, yeah. And after a few years of being in there, it's not comfortable for me to not be me. When I first started getting tattooed, the shop I was going to, I remember walking in there to see this dude here. Here's this guy earning a living by doing what he wanted. He had long hair. And I was like, God, man, this guy is like living free. You know what I mean? All right. How do I get that? I don't want to say it was a, an easy transition. I definitely worked my ass off to get it, but man, I definitely wanted that freedom in my life. And I got lucky and I got it. Well, man, there's nothing more I can do here. Yeah, that's badass. Phil really knocked this one out of the park. The colors on this thing just pop. He adds the white little highlights. All right, my friend. Cool. Definitely appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure. Glad you like it. So I hope the boys have a good trip back up to St. Louis. Hope everything goes well for them. Can't wait to see them again and party with them and probably see me up in the block party. We'll see what happens though. I got to sit back, kick it, tell stories, laugh, cut up just become friends with Phil. Probably in my top three favorite tattoo shops that we visited. Everything cool from every tattoo shop you've ever been in and put it in one shop, that was a memorial tattoo. I didn't know that it was possible to become an ordained wizard, but somehow he figured it out. I mean, he's got a staff and a beard and everything. So that's it, last two days of our journey, and tomorrow we head to Chattanooga, Tennessee. See ya. See ya. Hey, this is Big Dave. If you want to stay in touch, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for all new content.